It's beautiful. Yeah, it truly is. Glasses? Glasses. So here it is, my full Wii U collection. I did it, I finally done it. I have every single PAL Wii U game and even the 17 NTSC exclusive games, giving a grand total of 179 English language Wii U games. So just why did I collect all these Wii U games? Well, basically a full GameCube collection would be way too expensive and if I went to collect a full Wii collection then I'd probably need a bigger house. Also, the Wii U is such a unique system because it's basically everything Nintendo did up to that point in one machine. It had all the motion controls of the Wii and it also had two screens just like a DS. Which yes, did give it no personality or identity of its own, but it does also mean that I can't see many of these games ever being ported to other systems. And yes, I know what you're thinking, the main problem with collecting Wii U is that most of the games have been ported to the Switch. But not properly, you can't use both the screens, and even Nintendo realised this, as when they made Breath of the Wild, they removed the second screen functionality on the Wii U, purely so that the Wii U version wouldn't be way more superior to the Nintendo Switch version. And I don't know, they just look cool, they're all blue. I say they're all blue, but that's not all of them, because the NTSC games or American games games aren't blue, they're just white, which makes them stick out from all the other games. Of those 17 games, I can see why most of them weren't ported, such as Madden, which is just something we don't have in the UK. But come on, NES Remix and DuckTales? Why are you trying to keep DuckTales from me? My copy of Cars 3 I really need to replace, as it has a very strange printed cover, which has the PAL front of the box, but then the American side and back. You will see that some of these games are sealed and that's not by design. I'm not in any way a sealed collector and I intend to play all these games. It's just that if you collect this many games, the chances are when you buy some, some of them will be brand new. It was usually just the same price or sometimes even cheaper to buy the new versions. The only games that I don't have here are the collector's editions and Japanese games. And there are about 30 Japanese games. I don't know if I'll collect them. I probably will, but not just yet. Let me have this. As for collector's editions, they mostly just take up a lot of space and I don't really fancy spending way more on the same game just because there's, I don't know, an exclusive Lego figure or scarf. This was around the time when Nintendo started packaging Amiibo with a lot of their games. And like I have the Amiibo, I just don't have the cardboard box that goes around the Amiibo and the game. So unless I come across them for really cheap, right now I'm just happy to have the games. So I started collecting for the Wii U back in 2012 when I got my first Wii U on Christmas Day, wherein I got five games for the system, those being Disney's Epic Mickey 2, Nintendo Land, New Super Mario Bros. U, Skylanders Giants and Zombie U. And over the course of the console's lifetime I accumulated around 20 to 30 games for it. But it wasn't until January 1st, 2021 that I decided I wanted to go for a full Wii U collection. That's right, my New Year's resolution that year wasn't to get fit or get healthy, no. It was to make a very poor financial decision. And it all started with LEGO Jurassic World. I saw someone on Facebook Marketplace was selling it cheaply. So I stupidly made the decision to walk 5 miles on New Year's Day to pick up this game. I went to some guy's farm and he had it in like a black bag. It was absolutely the first of many bad decisions. Then initially I bought a load of bundles with consoles and then sold them on to make some money to buy more games. And within only a few months I had pretty much most of the games for the system. But that's when it got a lot harder because all the bundles I was buying just had the same games I already owned in them. So I had to start buying the games singularly, which is where it started to get expensive. The most I spent on any games for the system were Project Zero, which cost £150, Zumba, which was 140 I think Zumba is the absolute bane of any Wii U collector's existence, as it's a game that should be like a pound. No one wants it, no one's really going to play it, and there's the American version laughing at you being super cheap. But no, you've got to get the stupidly expensive English version. Thankfully, I didn't get the collector's edition which just comes with a belt and makes the price just ridiculous if you can even find one available. 
and Scribble Noughts Unmasked, which was about 120. That game, by the way, is an Australian exclusive, so I had to get shipped all the way from Australia. That's where most of the expense came from. But those aren't the most valuable games I own. Phineas and Ferb has gone up in price insanely. It was going for around £40 when I got it as part of a bundle, but now it's going for nearly £200. Then there's of course Finding Teddy 2 and Shmup Collection, which are both limited release games with only 3,000 of each being made, which I got for about £25 each, and now they're selling for over £200. So I don't know, maybe I'll keep these ones sealed. But that's far from the most expensive Wii U game. And if you are a hardcore Wii U collector, you might already know what that game is. You might also notice that I don't own it. And that's because I don't count it as a Wii U game. The game is Pokemon Rumble U, which consists of a box, a poster, a figure, and a download code. Now the eShop is closed, the download code doesn't work anymore. So it's pretty much just a cardboard box. A cardboard box which commonly sells for over £500 and the only one on eBay right now is £1,500. For a box, a poster and a figure. So this is the game Nintendo used to test the waters of Amiibo, wherein you could buy the Pokemon figures, scan them into the game and then play as that character. And you know what? I own all the figures. Look, this one's Pikachu and as you can see by the figures they're really small and have this low polygon design. Look, I'll show you another one. Here's Mew. So I'm not gonna spend a thousand five hundred pound on a box, a poster and a figure I already own. I have the game digitally, that's, that's enough. Another game that I decided didn't really count was New Super Mario Bros. U plus New Super Luigi U, as it's just two games on the same disc, and I own both games separately, so I didn't really see the point of getting that. Although, admittedly, getting that would take my collection up to an even 180, so maybe I'll get it? Speaking of spending stupid money on boxes that do nothing, here's my mostly sealed Mario vs Donkey Kong tipping stars which is just the download code in a box. A download code that I can now no longer redeem since the closure of the eShop. But these are really rare and I came across this and it wasn't too expensive so I got it. So it took me roughly two and a half years to get a full Wii U collection once I started properly collecting it. And some of the last games I got were some really cheap ones that I just put off getting, like Skylander Superchargers and Trap Team which are some of the very cheapest games you can get for Wii U, and I always just expected that they'd show up in a bundle at some point, but never did. So Skylanders Trap Team was the last game I needed. I bought it on eBay, and then the guy just didn't send it for like a month. So that's why this video's taken so long to come out. A couple of my favorite games for the system would be Hyrule Warriors, which was a game that I put so much time into and just loved. You go around fighting hundreds of enemies at once and you're so overly powered, it's amazing. And also Rayman Legends, which I think is in my top five games of all time. Despite the fact that I think it's kind of what killed the Wii U, as it was supposed to come out soon after Wii U's launch, but then Ubisoft were like, oh, this system isn't selling all that well. Let's delay the game for like half a year and then also release it on all the other systems. Which just shows that a lot of companies were losing faith in the Wii U very early on in its life. But I can't really recommend you getting these games on Wii U, as they now both have definitive editions on Switch. So just get them on that instead. And while this console does have a load of great games, a lot of the library does consist of filler. By which I mean a lot of Just Dance games, as well as a lot of LEGO games. Towards the end of the Wii U's life, these seem to be the only two types of games that were coming out on the system. And I think Just Dance 2019 might have been the very final game released on the system, if you don't include limited release games. The LEGO games were some of the best consistent games on the system. And LEGO Dimensions is a game that I highly recommend. It's probably my favourite Toys to Life game. I played so much of it at university and got so many of the figures, like Gremlins and Doctor Who and Portal and whatever this thing is. And, uh, oh, oh yeah, there was E.T. and, wait, wait what's that underneath? This, uh, ah! I believe Devil's Third is the most expensive game on Wii U in America, but the PAL version of the game is still relatively inexpensive and was even cheaper when I got it. I think I paid like £10 for it. Turbo is another game that I know costs stupid money in America, but in power regions, again, just £15 currently. I find stuff like that really weird because 
Are there really that many more copies of Turbo in the UK than America? The Cruise is a really annoying one as it's a game which has just crept up in price over the years. I initially turned it down at £20, then it went up to 30 now it's up to 70 I think I got it at the end for something around 50 and yeah, the Wii version is like £3. Or in the case of Rodea, where I spent £38 on the game, then found it sealed the next day for half the price. And today, it's not even worth that. So if you are getting into Wii U collecting, don't think of it as an investment, as many of these games do go down in price. I do also have some big box versions of some games, such as Hunter's Trophy 2, which comes with this big rifle, and Kokoto 2 Magic Circus, which comes with two handguns. There's Sing Party, which comes with a big microphone, despite the fact it just being a USB microphone, as well as the Wii U gamepad having its own built-in microphone. A microphone really wasn't needed for this game. Get in there. Speaking of unnecessary musical peripherals, here's Guitar Hero Live, which comes with a big plastic guitar peripheral that I need to find space for. Shantae Half Genie Hero, which comes with a CD. And if the price of this game goes anywhere near the price of the Shantae games on Switch, this one's staying in the bubble wrap. Axiom Verge, Skylanders Imaginators and Skylanders Superchargers. For these games I decided to get the Dark Editions, which is pretty similar to the normal versions, except here the characters are dressed in black. Look how stylish Donkey Kong looks. Despite the Wii U's relatively small library, there is still a lot of filler there and a lot of games that I'm probably just not going to play. Like the Barbie games or Love Me Buddies. Hey, I don't know, maybe Love Me Buddies is great, but what's definitely not going to be great is Fit Music for Wii U, which is just the most blatant ripoff of Wii Fit. But I do intend to play every single one of these games and hopefully include them all in videos. Like, I've nearly reviewed 30 of them in this video alone. Do check that video out if you haven't watched it already because I spent a lot of time on that video. My advice for anyone starting a collection or thinking about starting a collection would be don't. Just don't. Instead, go out, make friends, fall in love. You won't regret it. But what you will regret is spending a week of your life comparing the cheapest place to get Smurfs to. But if you are going to insist on collecting for the Wii U, or in fact any console, I absolutely recommend getting an app to catalogue your collection. I use one called Retro Collector and I cannot tell you how many times it saved me from buying a duplicate copy of a game that I already own when I'm out. So what's next? Now I've done all Wii U, what am I going to collect now? Well, I got an analog pocket for Christmas, and Game Boy Advance is one of my favourite systems, maybe even my favourite. So whilst I already have a pretty extensive cartridge collection, I've started to buy a few of my favourite games for the system, complete in box, because I seemingly just don't like having money. I've also recently started buying a lot of things from Japan, such as this gun and this lion which will be part of a new YouTube series I'm starting this summer, which takes a look at the entire history of Nintendo, starting all the way back in the 19th century where they were simple card makers, all the way up to, I don't know, probably the Switch Free by the time I'm finished with it. And if that interests you, then make sure that you subscribe, ring the little bell icon, so you can be notified when that series starts coming out. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.